you know, it's we are not in Conor McGregor's shoes. You know, people can mm. shout what they want. They have no clue what goes on. I think once people realize that you have fifty million dollars, you get he gets mail all day long for people with sick babies and sick kids and sick my grandma, and everybody wants him to give money. I mean, that goes on and so on. He doesn't only have money; he is super famous on top of that. You know, so I knew the stupid stuff I did when I was twenty-eight. You know, no, I didn't do that. Okay, yeah. but. I, you know, he has a group around him and, you know, and, and he was already angry going in because they're going to take, strip him from the title and he's angry. And now when the the, 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 the partners, his friends start going, hey, maybe uh, we should so, throw something against him. But yeah, yeah, you know, everybody starts agreeing. Yeah, you get caught up in that whole moment and you start doing it. That's why I said when I was on Joe Rogan, I said, guys, we should give him a pass. And then people go online, they go like, is he crazy? I'm not saying that. I'm saying, yes, he's going to have to pay for what he did. He has to go to court. He has to do all that. I'm not saying that. Of course he has to. And I said that on Rogan as well. But give him a pass as a fan. Why don't kick the guy under the bus, right? Don't kick the guy under the bus. He did so much good for MMA. He just needs to find his way in this world. This guy was pretty much unknown four years ago. Now he's one of the most known guys on the planet. Yeah, that's It's a hard thing to deal uh, to deal with. I, I don't know if I could have done it. You know, it's so... I always think I always try to put myself in their shoes and I go, man, yeah, me with that kind of money at that age. I don't know what would have happened to me. I don't you know, I'm, I'm a smart guy now. I would think that I would keep that money, but I don't at 28. I don't know, man. I, I was just a complete different animal. So mm -hmm. I hope that they just, you know, give him a pass. Don't spit him out yet. Let him see if he cleans up. I mean, you give John Jones all, all passes. Well, I think that, you know. Let's let's do it. And I, me too. I love John Jones. I want to see him back. I was such a talent that is gone. And I want to see him fight. This could be a guy who can literally go undefeated his entire life. So, yeah, I would love to see a guy like that back. Plus, you know, this is a great comeback. You know, it's like the Apostle Paul. I'm talking about his <laughs> Right. But he came back and now he's a big believer. Jesus visited him. But the whole thing happened. This is the impact you can have. You know, your impact that color can have now on kids and that John Jones can have become a really good fight and become a role model. You know, stop changing lives around. Stop making people happy and start, you know, doing things. Charity. I think once guys like that start doing it, then more people start doing it. And with their power that they have, hopefully people start following them and, and, and do the same thing. Mm. And a final question on McGregor. If him and Khabib do fight, what is your pick? Who do you predict wins? Because that's the big blockbuster fight. One of the big blockbuster fights everyone's talking about. Yeah, that's it's, you know, I, I go back to Chad Mendes, right? And Chad didn't have only uh, 12 days to train or something. And he put him on his back immediately, pretty much. And he had mm. a problem on his back. Khabib is a guy who's not going to run out of gas in a full training camp. And he's going to be on him. Now, don't get me wrong, and I mean, Gabib's never been put, knocked out, nothing, but Conor can hit. He can really hit. And if he really uses footwork and he can land a shot and hope to capitalize on that, but I think once it goes to the ground, a guy like Gabib is just very hard to get off of you. Now, I don't know what he's been doing. He might have been wrestling even throughout his boxing camp that he had with Mayweather the match. I don't know, but he knows it's his Achilles heel. So he needs to work on that. And, and I had the same thing. I was pretty much the same... As Connor, I was a great striker, but, you know, I, I sucked at takedown defense. So, I don't know. It's it's a hard one. It's a punch chance. He loses, uh, uses a lot of footwork, and he can tag him, and he can actually knock him out, stop him. Yeah, it will. Uh, that Connor can do it, but can he knock him out? That's the question. Otherwise, it's going to be one of those fights that it's it's going to be grueling. It's going to be constantly on him, on him, on him. If, if, if you fight, if you face a really good striker, there's nothing worse to fight him constantly pushing forward. Now, you're going to need a lot of stamina for that. But then again, you know, you, you're wearing your opponent out as well. So it's like the Cormier fights and Cain Velasquez. Like mm. that, the best strikers have difficulty with that because she can't put your feet down and all the power comes from the foot. If I can't push off of my back foot, I can't put my body weight in the punch. Now, it doesn't mean that I can still knock him out. Of course I can. You know, there's guys that, that get punched out with a punch like that. I'm not saying that. But, you know, in order to get a big guy and a strong guy, yeah, you want to have your foot on the floor or two feet on the floor with hooks and uppercuts and at least your back foot on the floor once you start th throwing uh, straight punches. And if you can't do that, well, it takes a lot of power away. So if Khabib probably going to do this the whole time and he's going to have to work angles but it's 25 minutes fight time it's a it's a long time to avoid a takedown 
And that's, you know, and that's that's the reason why, obviously, you know, as fight fans, we're not sitting here sort of, you know, wanting to throw the book at Conor. Of course, every every one of us here speaking wants to see Conor back and everybody wants to see that, you know, Conor versus Khabib fight. But just quickly, I just wanted to elaborate sort of on what you said before, because Conor sort of had these kind of like public meltdowns before, you know, he had that thing in Bellator with, you know, Mike Goddard and, and jumping over the cage. And now, you know, this, this whole bus thing. I wonder if you can relate because you spoke about some of the, you know, things that you, you did when you were young and, and you had money and just kind of seems like when people are kind of young and they with Connor maybe he feels like he's sort of invincible and if if, if nothing happens kind of like I guess with with John Jones where if, if nothing happens to make them realize and go all right I need to change things like if he gets away with it and nothing happens it kind of sends the message that like well I did whatever I yeah. wanted and, and there are no consequences do you think something has to again I don't want to see the book thrown at him but do you think something has to happen so that he realizes all right I can't do whatever I want there are consequences to these things yeah, no, no, of course. And, um, you know, like jumping in a ring, you have to understand nobody says no to this guy. And if you, yeah. for a year, so for a year and a half, nobody says no to you, you know, you walk into, mm -hmm. he probably doesn't have a pass. Normally he needs a, a wristband to walk in and people don't say anything and don't say anything. Well, why can't I jump in the cage if my friend just won? You see, it's a logical thing. And especially if you have two drinks, you know, now it becomes, oh, it's, yeah, of course I can do. Well, what would be wrong with this? You know, that's how you think. And uh, yeah, I would have made that, could have made that mistake easy. I uh, I think it would have been the same. Uh, and you, you just said when you had money to me, I, I never had that kind of money. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> but, so so that, that's the thing. I think if I would have had that kind of money at that age, I don't know what I, uh, I would have done. I'm just very, I, I'm talking always to um, Don Fry. And we're always very happy about the fact that there was no social media when we, got, we were fighting. <laughs> That would have been a lot of crazy pictures. Why wow, you, you think people would have put put up videos and photos of you guys? Oh, for sure, people with the cameras. I mean, with the, the fights we had there in Japan, like on the street with 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 crazy people. I mean, it, it was nonstop. But you, you never fight with a Japanese guy. You will never. But if I see a little Japanese black guy get beat up by two big Americans or Australians or whatever they come from, yeah, I'm gonna say something, and especially because I can, right? So, okay, guys, leave the little guy alone. You know, well, what do you want to do about it? Well, actually, if you want, <laughs> you can always try. You see, that that was in the early days. You know, did, did that somebody... happen? Did you ever end up finding like random dudes because they didn't know who you were in Japan because you were sort of standing up for like the little guy? I had guys uh, uh, literally walking into me and challenging me and taking me outside. And then Whoa. literally, like, Guy Metzger would say to these guys, 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 we're all professional fighters. And he's like the worst one you can pick right now. So don't do that. And it will, oh, we all go, you know, I go, these guys said they were Navy SEALs, that SEALs tattooed on the bellies. They weren't Navy SEALs. They were just a bunch of bluff guys. But I, I stopped them all three. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> one guy, I choked him. Uh, but I, one guy, I armbarred, the last one. I armbarred <laughs> and he's screaming and I, I wouldn't hurt him. So I let him go. And right away when I let him go, he jumped on top of me again. Uh -huh. I roll him into the bar and now he's pleading. To please not, and they're already saying just snap his leg, and I go, nah, you know, I'm not going to do that. Who, so I who, let who go. Who was saying that guy, Mezger and Don Fry? The, the group of fighters that were there. Yeah. And uh, and right away when I let go, he attacks me again. Oh man. And I, I just put him to sleep, and that's why I just put him to what sleep. What did you do? Check him out. Now we might have pulled his pants down. I think when he was down. <laughs> 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 Yeah. But they were fighting everybody. It was literally in the bar, and I see them come in, and you see the people flying out, out of the path. They were pushing everybody away. And I'm looking at my friends, I said, oh, and right away when I'm looking to the side, boom, they push me, and that's how it started. You know, so uh, when I see that, all these, that, the, 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 the little people that they pick out, you know, and then actually they did it also with me. So I had to defend myself. Your Honor? I'm very sorry, but I had to defend myself. <laughs>